So let's uh, let's go through these. The first one says uh, we're given a network address of 192.168.0.0 uh, slash 24. How many usable host addresses are available in each subnet? So first of all, what class of address is this? And how do we know? 192 makes it a class C. Makes it a class C. So we, we know because it's a 192 and that gives us a class C. What do we know about the default subnet mask on a class C? Yeah, Jonathan correctly puts in here that it's 255.255.255.0, which is a slash 24. So we know that this is a default class C address. And our question is how many usable hosts are on this subnet? So what do we know that's gonna tell us how many hosts we can get off this subnet? We know our subnet mask is 255.255.255.0, which in binary is And I only do the binary here because it, it helps to visualize how many bits are available for our host, right? So we know we have eight bits available for the hosts. We also could have just taken 32, which is the total number of bits, subtracted 24. We also would have gotten eight bits for hosts. And then we can, we can figure it out in one of two ways. We can either know that there's 256 options for hosts here but we remember have to subtract two because the zero, all zeros is the network identifier and all ones is the broadcast. So that would give us a total of 254 hosts per. We also can use the method where we do two to the eight. Right? We should superscript that. Two to the N or H minus two. N being the number of bits for the subnet. So two to the eighth. And I don't want that superscripted. I can't undo it from there, but okay, let's do this. Two to the n minus two, or two to the h minus two, if you're so inclined, which is going to equal 254 yet again. Does anyone have any questions on how we got to that one? No, that one all makes sense to everyone. Okay. If that's the case, then uh, let's move on to number two. So for number two, it says, what is the subnet mask for a class C network with eight subnets? And we want to, with a maximum of 32 hosts per subnet. So we're trying to figure out the subnet mask. And we can do this one of two ways. We can either do it based on the eight subnets or we can do it on the 32 hosts. Um, so let's run it both ways and see what happens. So what do we know about a class C? 
Same thing we knew before, right? The default mask is the 255, 255, 2550. So from that, we know the only bits we can play with are these last ones because we've been provided this first part of the address. In this particular instance, we don't have an IP address, but that's not really all that relevant. So we have eight bits to play with. And in order to get eight subnets out of this, so let's play it from the subnet side first. How many bits do we need to get to eight? And how will we go about figuring that out? One way we could do it is by putting eight into our calculator as a decimal and looking at the binary and how many bits do we need to get to eight? So we have four places here that we need to get to. So what does that look like in our last octet? Because this is the only octet we can play with, right? We, we can't do anything else. We need four bits on the network side, which leaves us how many bits on the host side? Also leaves us four. And if we take this and convert it back into decimal, you can do that on our calculator as well. So if I go into binary mode and go clear and go, one, 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 two, three, four. In decimal, that is forty two four zero, right? Yep. So this equals two four zero. So therefore our subnet mask would be two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two four zero. So the question is, does that give us 32 hosts per subnet? So we can run the same problem from the other side. How do we get to 32 hosts? Four low order bits. So we need to figure out 32, right? So let's go back into decimal over here, clear this. 32 converted into binary requires how many bits? Five. Mm, six. Can we do it? We need six bits. So that means we need six zeros, leaving us only two bits. Assuming that this is a class C network. Hmm. That's a problem, is it not? So can we do this? If this is a class C network that we've been assigned, can we have eight subnets and get 32 hosts per subnet? No. No, we cannot, correct? Because to get the number of hosts, we, why did it change colors? We need six bits. That would mean we have one, one, And how many hosts, how many subnets does that leave us? Mm. 
we only have two bits for subnets, right? And with two bits, we can only get to four. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. So this particular problem, the answer is you can't actually get there. Trick question. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> so I could, I could get eight subnets, and I could get 32 hosts, but I cannot get both. if it's a class C network. So Omega asks, how many, how am I determining how many bits I need? Well, so to determine how many bits, that's what I use the calculator for. If I need eight subnets, for example, I come into my calculator and go decimal, clear it out, say eight. And then I look at the binary for eight and it takes up four bits. I need four places to get to eight. And then if I do the same thing on the post side, I go to decimal 32 in binary. I need the first. So these two over here don't matter because I don't need those, right? I need where we start at the one and we count to the right. I need six bits. Uh, yes. So they will give you um, a calculator, the calculator on the test. So you will have access to a binary converter. If you didn't, you could still figure it out. It's a little more challenging, but I can start by just counting, right? So to get to eight, I know um, I know there's an eight spot in my progression and I would work from left to right. I would say, okay, to get to eight, it is, uh, I, I work from left to right. So I know I don't need a 128, oops. No, we'll worry about the color, I guess. Um, I know I don't need a 128. I know I don't need a 64. I don't need a 32. I don't need a 16. I need an eight and that gets me to eight. So the rest of it gets filled out with zero. So I don't need a four. I don't need a two. I don't need a one. And this is eight. So, so you can manually figure it out by doing it that way. You just have to know what the place values are. So it's 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. So could I fix this problem by just taking this out? And then how would I solve it? And what do I have, to, what assumptions do I have to make? And, and this is actually something you may see on the exam. Well, assume that it's a class B, I guess. So, so we don't necessarily know that just yet, but we could calculate this and how would we go about it? I would start with, okay, it says we need eight subnets, but it doesn't give us a definitive there, right? It doesn't say maximum or minimum or anything of the sort. It does tell, tell us, however, that there's a maximum of 32 hosts. So on a question like this, I would start with, okay, I know I, I'm never going to have more than, because it says maximum, of 32 hosts. Let's start there. So to get to 32, we know we needed six bits. So that's the last octet, six bits. And we'll go uh, with those six bits. Those are all going to be zeros. So that means I know that in the last octet, I can have this. Okay, and then I can look at the other side and go, okay, it says I need eight subnets. Can I get to eight subnets with what's left in this octet? And the answer to that is no, we know we needed four bits, which means that we have to add on at least two more bits over here 
to our subnet. Correct? But in order to do that, we would need this whole octet. to be part of our subnet mask. So therefore we know we need at least two octets, which then puts us to a class B address in order to get there. Because we have to be able to manip manipulate these four digits to get to eight subnets. So that makes the subnet mask then What is the last octet going to be? It's this one right here. Yeah, Omega is correct. It is 192. So it's the 128 plus the 64 gives us 192. So not possible with the class C network that was in the original question, but possible if it's a class B and here is the subnet mask. How many subnets do we actually get out of that? We actually get 10 bits for subnets. Way more than eight, right? It's 10 to the two, or two to the 10 rather, which is gonna be uh, 1024. Uh, no, sorry, 256, yeah, 1024. Does that make sense? Sort of, kind of. How, how did you determine again how many bits you needed? So I did, because it says maximum of 32 for hosts, if you take decimal value of 32 and you look at the binary, you need everything from the one over. That means I need six places, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need six bits for hosts. Those become zeros starting from the right hand side working my way back so i need six of the last eight bits to be zeros that means the two of them can be two of them in the last octet can be subnets but two to get to eight subnets is not enough because if i put eight into my calculator over here and look at the binary. It is one zero 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 that requires four bits, which means I have to steal from this octet back here as well. These bits are needed to get eight subnets. These bits are needed to get 32 hosts. Does that explain it? We have some more to do, so you'll, we'll get it a few more times throughout our quiz here. So would the third octet be 255 or would it be reduced? Uh, it, it would be 255 because you can only have, remember you can only have on the subnet side, you can only have all ones, which means if I need two ones in the last one, I, all the rest of them have to be one in the subnet mask. So I can't do something like this. I can't have in a subnet mask. That is invalid. It has to be all ones on the subnet side. So like I said, we're going to see some more of these. So let's move on to question three. Unless there's other questions here. 
before we do that. So the next one says, what is the broadcast address for a subnet with a network address of 172.16.10.0 slash 28? Hmm. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways to go about figuring this one out. One of them is just by using the the binary form, right? So what is our, our binary for 28, a uh, slash 28 gives us 28 bits that are on the network side. That's 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, leaving us four more bits for hosts. So, so that gets us what our subnet mask is, right? So what is our subnet mask in this particular scenario? And you can convert this using the calculator, right? So I can just take this. You won't have to necessarily figure it out. You can just put it into the calculator. And that comes out to a decimal of 240. I really wish we would do that. Four zero. Okay. Now I also could could add that up, right? So it's one twenty eight plus sixty four, which is one ninety two, plus thirty two, which is two twenty four, plus sixteen is two four. How does this help? Now, now we know our subnet mask. We know the number of bits. We have a an address here, a network address of 10.0. So what is our network increment? Because that's going to help us get to our broadcast address. And how do we know the increment? There's two methods of finding it as well. There's probably more than two, but two that we've Discuss. One of them is using the what they call the magic number, which is 256 minus 240, which equals 16. So our network increment is 16. And we know we're dealing with only the last octet because that's where our subnet mask is not a 255 or a zero. So therefore, we're dealing with this octet and, and we know our network here is zero. What's the next network? Sixteen. It's sixteen, right? Our increment is sixteen. The next network is going to be at sixteen. So we're not looking for the next network. We're looking for the broadcast address. So we take the next network and we go down by one and that gives us our broadcast address, right? So we take that 16 to get to the broadcast address for the previous subnet. It's minus one, so that equals 15. And we put that into the spot where we're dealing with, because we're only dealing with this last stock tap. So our answer becomes 172.16.10.15. Broadcast. And what does that look like in binary, just the last octet in binary. What is 15 converted to binary? So we can do that via the calculator. So we have all oh, ones. It's four ones, correct? Yep. Four ones in the last four spots. 
gives us our broadcast address. And if we were to go to 16, whoops, probably need to clear that first. No, 16 goes to the fifth digit, which brings us into our subnet and changes a subnet indicator. So we know we're on a different subnet than we would be with the zero over here. Oops. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So we have another how many subnets question can be created from a network address of 10 0 0 0 slash 16. So this is a, a, the address we've been given and we have a subnet mask that we're using. So they gave us a subnet mask of 255.255.248.0. And they're asking how many subnets does that give us? So anyone have any thoughts on how we would start this process? I think I'd write it in binary first. Okay. Uh, oh wait, sorry, Jonathan, you had a question. Why is minus 256? You're talking about the, the, this question here, why we did this 256 minus 240. So that, that is the magic number method. 256 is the uh, maximum number of options in any octet. And we're trying to figure out the increments. We take that and we subtract the subnet mask and it gives us the increment, which is then 16. So if the number changes by 16, we're on a different subnet. So that's why we did it, because it's, it's the magic number formula. Uh, next time we, next problem we have like this, I'll do it a different way, just so you can see the other, the other method. Okay, so, so back to this one. Somebody, uh, somebody mentioned converting it into binary. What are we converting into binary? I like the idea, but are we converting the IP into binary? Or are we converting the subnet mask into binary? What's going to be the most helpful? Omega says the subnet mask. Uh, I agree. Let's do this. Yeah. So a couple of things to note here. Because we know that we've been given a slash 16, that means we don't care about the first two octets. So in this case, they're all going to be ones, which we know. So we're, we're going to put them in. I'm going to put them in here as red. We can't touch those, right? Because we were given by someone these first two, or, or this address, which says it's slash 16, which means we have no control over the first 16 bits. We were also given this subnet mask which we can control some of. And it says 248. So what is 248? So we can do it once again by the addition method. 128 plus 64 is 192 plus 32 is 224 plus 16 is 240 plus 8 is 248, and then that is now 5 bits. We have 3 more bits that are going to be hosts, right? So let's change those to a different color, just so we can differentiate here. Uh, that's probably, let's go. Navy, Navy. Okay. So this is what we know we have, and then we also have the zero. 
what are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out how many subnets are created. Well, so for subnets, we know we're not dealing with hosts. So we're going to ignore all of these zeros, right? We can't, changing these does not change the subnet. Only thing that changes the subnet is these bits right here. We can't touch these. We're not allowed. We are given this mask, so the only bits that we're dealing with are these bits right here. So how would we go about figuring out now how many subnets that is with, with just this information? Omega says we take two to the fifth power and we're doing the fifth power because there's five bits right here. And two to the fifth power is? 32. So we know that. So we take two raised to the fifth and that equals 32. So therefore we have 32 subnets. Everyone see how we got there? And that is that is the method I would use as well. So that's that's probably the easiest method. There are other ways of figuring that out, but that's probably the easiest. All right. Let's move on then to number five. And number five says we're given a network, 172.16.0.0 slash 23. And it's asking us what is the valid range of host addresses in the third subnet. So we know there's multiple subnets. And we're being asked what the valid range in the third subnet is. So what do we need to do to determine what the third subnet is? How do we start this problem? Or how would you start this problem? As a slash 23, I would write down the, the bits associated with that. Okay, so we would, we could do this, right? We can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, that's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. We have to fill that one out with a 24th bit. And that is our subnet mask in binary. Okay, what do we learn from this? What octet are we dealing with for the network to change? The third one. The third one, right? Because that's the one that's not a zero or a one, all ones. So we're only dealing with the third octet, which means that this has to change somehow in order to go from one subnet to the next. What does it have to change by in order to go from one subnet to the next? And, and we have a couple of methods to do that, right? We can use this same method we used up here in question three. What is this converted into decimal? And we can do that using the calculator. So binary, paste that in, and we get 254.
So one 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 zero equals two fifty four. And then we can use the two fifty six the magic number method. Right? 256 minus 254 is 2, so therefore our increment is 2. If it changes 2, then we're on the, the next network. So this octet here goes to 0, then to 2, then to 4, then to 6. And I would write them out, right? So I would go, okay, so that means our increment's 2. And how else could I figure out the increment was 2? Other than using the magic number method. What's the lowest order bit in that octet? So 2 to the first is 2. So I keep, right, I only have one bit here that can change. So two to the one is two. If anything greater than two, then we're in the next octet. So therefore you can use that method as well. I also could do it out binarily, right? So I know that I'm dealing with basically just the last two bits here that can change. So what are my options on the first bit? It can be a zero or a one. That's only two options, right? So then I just start writing out my my networks. What's the next one? Two. Two dot zero, right? Incrementing by two. And then our next one. Is four. Yep. And what did we need? We need the third subnet. And I need the range of valid hosts. So we have the third subnet. Okay. So what do we know about the first host when we have a subnet? <clears throat> so this is our third subnet. So this is the one we want. So let's change the color to this one to green because this is our, that's the, that's the subnet we're dealing with. Okay, Omega says the, the subnet ID. What do we have to do to the subnet ID to get to the first valid host? Yeah, add one. Yep, exactly. So the, the method is we take the subnet ID and we add one. We basically change the last bit in the subnet identifier to a one, and that gives us our first address. So the first address is going to be 172.16.4.1. How do we get to the last address? It's the broadcast minus one. So what is the broadcast for this, this particular range? Where does the range go up to? Where's the next range start? So we know it's going to be 172.16 because we're not changing the first two octets.
So we've got 255. 255 is correct for the last octet. Okay, so Chris comes up with 5.255. That's the broadcast, right? Because if we went to 6.0, that would be a new subnet. So one down from that is 5.255. But the last usable address then becomes 5.254. Which is gives us our range of, of possible addresses. Everyone see how we got there? Because what would happen with the next one would be at one seventy two dot sixteen dot six dot zero. So that's the next network. We go down one, which is going to be 5.255. That's the broadcast for the range. So we have to take one more away to get to 5.254 as our last usable address. Now, we can also do this in, in binary, right? So we know that 172.16.4.0 is our subnet. So if I do, and I'm going to ignore the first two octets because we're not dealing with those. What is four in binary? Right? Okay. And we know that there's also all of these other bits over here. Um, this is our network identifier. What is our next network in binary? We know it's six, right? So what is six in binary? One one zero, right? So if we know that this is one subnet and this is the next subnet, what we can do in binary to get to our lowest possible is we just do this same thing, right? So zero 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 one zero zero and then zero 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 one is gonna be our, our low order. And our high order is gonna be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, we're dealing with a slash 23, so we have this bit to deal with, right? So we can change this one to a 1 and still be okay, because this is a host bit. Right, this bit here is still a host bit. All of this is, is host. So one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the high order bit. And, and it, it does help here if I signify that these are host bits. And I'll do that by, just by changing the color. Right, and I can do that over here too. These are host bits. And that gives us our binary versions, and then we just convert those back to decimal. So it would be this, which we already know is four because we haven't changed it, dot this, which is one, through this, 
this, which is 4 plus the 1. which is 5 dot all 1s, which is 255. But can we have all 1s? That's our broadcast address. So we know we can't, so we have to go back one and make this a 0. And we're just highlighting this as our post bits. Everyone see how we got there? It's really about figuring out what the increment is and then figuring out your networks and then just adding one to the low side on the network, going to the next network and subtracting two um, bits to get to the, the highest. Because you can't have the all zeros or the all ones, that's your network and your broadcast. Make sense? Yes, no, maybe? I don't know if I take silence as yes or if I take silence as we're all really confused. Let's take a look at our next one. And I'm <laughs> Perfect. Let's take a look at our next one. And, and uh, I'm going to show you after we get done these questions, I'll show you a, a way that you can, uh, you can generate your own questions and get pretty decent explanations of the answers. Uh, so you can do a lot of practice with this stuff if you so choose. Um, so what is the subnet ID for the IP address 192.168.1.135 slash 27? Who wants to take a stab at how we would go about this? Anyone? No one's willing to step up? I think a couple of you got this one right. So converting the mask to binary, and we can do the whole thing, right? So we'll convert that to binary. And that is what it looks like in binary. Okay, now that we've done that, what do we know? And I'll show you a, a method that I didn't show you yesterday uh, after we go through the, the method that Omega is using here. So Omega, what do we do next? Okay, 
so we know we're dealing with the fourth octet, right? So we're dealing with just this octet. Yep. So we don't care about any of this, which means we don't care about any of this. That's going to stay the same. So we know that our subnet ID is going to be 192.168.1. something. Okay. How are we determining what that something is? So we could, we could use the magic number method, which is what the, the book suggested. Yep. So the magic number method 256 minus what? We'd have to convert this back to decimal, right? Which is 224. So what is our increment then? So if we convert that back, this is 224. So 224 is our, oops. So then we can go 256 minus 224, and that equals 32. Our increment is 32, okay? Now what? We have our increment of 32. So if this last number changes by 32, we're on new subnets. It's good to know. How does that help us with 135? Okay, so why are we subtracting 32 from 135 on my hand? This is where it gets a little tricky. One thing I could do is I could just write out the, the subnets, right? So I could say, okay, I know my first one is gonna be zero, Next one's going to be 32, next one's going to be 64, uh, 96, uh, 128, comma, 160. I can stop here because now I'm up higher than 135, right? And I can look at this and go, okay, it, I'm looking for the subnet for 135. I need to go the one lower, which is 128. So therefore the subnet is going to be the, the answer because we can't touch the first part. 1.128. So, so that's one possible method of getting to it. We can use the magic number. We can then just write out the ranges and we can figure it out. Another method of getting to it is using our binary. So we, we have this binary, right? So let's copy this guy. I'm gonna go down here and paste this in. And this number in binary, so what's 135 in binary? And we can figure it out or we can go through it and say 128, I don't need a 64, I don't need a 32. I really only need what, six more? Mm 
too many zeros in there? No. Is that correct? So we got 128 plus 4, 132. Plus 2 plus, plus one. Yep. 2 plus 1 is 135. The only bits we're actually dealing with are these first three. If any of those change, we're on a new subnet, right? So to get the subnet ID, all we really need to do is change all of these to zeros. So one, zero, 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 gives me my subnet mask. We convert that back into decimal equals 128. Because we don't care about the host side of it. We don't care about any of this. But if any of this changes, we're on a new subnet. So this has to be the same. And then the subnet will be the zeros of that. So we convert all the host bits into zeros. And that gives us the subnet ID. So just another method of, of doing it. Um, some find that easier because they don't mind dealing with the binary. Some find it easier to deal with it in decimal. Either way works. Okay. Let's move on to number seven. What is the maximum number of hosts that can be accommodated in a subnet with a subnet mask of 255-255-255-192? How are we going to go about figuring this one? Convert to binary yet again. So what we're, what are we converting to binary? Just well, the one we Yeah, we can convert the whole thing, but does it matter? No. Just we only really care about the 192. So 192 is one one zero 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 zero. Okay. So what does that do for us? We've now converted it. It's orange. It's blue. So this is 192. What are we looking for? The number of hosts. So which bits are we dealing with? The zeros or the ones? The zeros. The zeros. And what are we going to do with them? Put them all to one and add it up. OK. That, that's essentially what we're doing, right? Yeah. We can do it that way, so we can make all these ones and add it up. And what does that give us? If, if we have six ones in binary, go over to our calculator. 64. That gives us, not 64. Gives us 63. Right. So Jonathan says 64 is the magic number. So if we're working on host, magic number is 64. So how many actual <coughs> hosts can we get? Can we get 64 hosts? Chris says 62. Why do we go to 62, Chris? Yeah, minus the wire in the broadcast. Correct, because you have to minus the net ID and the broadcast. So we have to take two away. So if we converted that, it's converts to 63 if we made it all ones. And we have to take one away from that. And the reason for that is because it doesn't count the zero. If we did the two to the six method, that would give us 64 and we take away two. So that gives us 
two raised to the sixth, and then we have to minus two, which equals 62. Make sense? Okay. Let's move on to our next one. What is the subnet mask that provides us the maximum number of hosts per subnet for a class C network with five subnets? Hmm. And it says each requiring at least 60 hosts. But it says providing the maximum number of hosts for a class C. How would we go about figuring this one out? And this question is uh, another one of these that may not work. What do we know about a class C? Yeah, Chris says can't. How do we know that you can't? So what do we know about a class C? We know it's gonna have a subnet mask of, by default, So we, we know that we're only dealing with then the last octet that we can subnet. We need five subnets and potentially 60 hosts. Okay, so can we do both? What do we need to get to five subnets? How many bits do we need to steal from our total of eight? So we have eight that we can deal with. How do I get to five? How many bits do I need? Pull up your calculator, go into decimal. Five in binary requires three bits, right? So I need three bits which means that my subnet mask would go to one, one, one to get to five subnets. How many bits do I need to get to 60 hosts? We can do the same thing over here in decimal, 60. And in binary, that is six, six bits. You don't, bits. And you don't have it. Uh, we only have five. So can we get to 60 hosts? The answer is no, we cannot. So in order to do this, what would have to change? Something has to change, right? Drop the subnet down to four. Maybe if we drop subnets, if we drop subnets to four, does it help? Yeah, because then you get an extra bit back for hosts. Do you? What happens if we go to decimal, move this out, go four, we still need three bits.
So this problem, again, is a you can't get there. Now, what if we were to say, okay, how many hosts can we get as opposed to requiring at least 60? We just want to know what the maximum number is. Do this. What is the maximum number of posts now? Post per subnet. So we already know we needed three bits for the subnets. That leaves us five bits for hosts. We'll go right back to the same thing we just did in the last problem, right? So what's two to the fifth minus two? So 30. Two equals 30 hosts. Okay. Now, if the thing didn't say class C, then we would have to recognize that we were back here, just like on the first problem, and calculate based off that and bump back into this subnet. And then we'd get a lot more hosts because we'd be dealing with three bits here as opposed to here. They likely will not give you multiple of these that try to trick you with things that are not possible. You likely will only get ones that are possible. We got two more and then we'll take a break. Then one for a little while here. Um, what is the first usable host address in a subnet with a network address of 10, 10, 0, 0, slash 16? What do we do to get to the first usable host? Anyone remember? This one's an easy one. Doesn't doesn't take any binary math, doesn't do really do much. Yeah, we just add one, right? So it's zero dot one. Because to get to the first usable host, we take the subnet and add one. Um, I guess it says you got it wrong. Um, well, that's probably because I didn't put the answers into the, the quiz. <laughs> so it probably said you got most of them wrong because it, I didn't put answers in. That's my, that's my fault. Um, I will provide you with uh, the questions and the answers. And I'll also show you how I generated them. Um, so last one, how many host addresses are available in a subnet with a subnet mask of 255.255.252.0? How do we go about figuring this one out? Take 32 minus the subnet mask. Why are you, Omega, why would we 
What? Where'd you get the 32 from? Two to the power of 10. Okay, it's Jonathan, two to the power of 10. And why do you, how'd you get to two to the power of 10? Yep, yep, we take the number of bits that are zero, so we convert this into binary, and we don't care about the first two because they're all ones, right? So we take 252, and zero and convert it into binary. So it's 252. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that gives us 10 bits that could be hosts on each subnet. So then we do two raised to that power. Minus two, and that equals ten twenty two. Ah, I see what you're saying. Yep, yeah, correct. So there's thirty two total bits. So Omega was doing it with the thirty two total bits minus the network side, which was twenty two bits because it's a slash 22, that gave him 10, raised two to the 10th, and take the two away, because you have the broadcast and the network identifier, that gives you 1,022 posts per subnet. All right, so it's uh, about 11.50. Let's take a short break. Uh, let's take 10 minutes. So back at the top of the hour and we will, um, I'll show you how you can generate your own questions and answers and get explanations. It's, it's, a uh, very helpful or should be very helpful in your studying. So let's, uh, reconvene in 10 minutes. <laughs>